Uh, can you help us understand first how magnetic tape functions on a basic level? Uh, magnetic recording was figured out quite early. Uh, it was first applied to wire. Uh, so this is a steel wire, uh, a bit thicker than a human hair, and on the spool is maybe a mile or so of wire. Um, and so this was even in the acoustic era, they had figured this out uh, in the early 1900s, but they still hadn't, uh, there, there was no reliable microphone or amplifier to use with it. And so it wasn't very practical. For a short time it was used for like, like answering machine recording and things like that for, from phone lines. It, it just kind of um, sat there and didn't uh, get, get developed further. But, but the basic technology is to um, uh, vary, the, uh, vary the magnetic fields from, from north to south poles. Um, and so it ends up looking like um, almost like, uh, like bars. Um, and you can expose the, the track. So the, the recorded track is essentially invisible to the eye. It's not like a record where you can actually see the groove or anything. If you look at the uh, tape itself, it just, just, just looks blank. And so the only way to know that it's recorded is to uh, uh, develop the track or use these little viewers. So you can see it ends up looking uh, like light and dark lines. And those are um, the, uh, the magnetic fields being uh, shown. And that correlates then to an audio signal in that the, the bars are areas of high density, like, like pressure, I guess, high pressure and low pressure. So frequency is essentially how quickly it, it's changing between the, uh, the two fields. And then level is how uh, strong the field is on the other tape. So this um, uh, technology was applied to wire, uh, but also to a tape. So the Germans developed uh, tape recording in the mid 1930s. And this is an example of an early magnetophone tape machine. Uh, this one's from the late 30s. But the early tape machines were still fairly poor quality. And uh, so even though the Americans were aware of, of the tape machine, it was demonstrated here in the mid 30s, the disc recording was still so much better that no one gave it much mind at the time. What was the difference between the tape that the Americans had heard and the tape that eventually sounded much better than those wax recordings? So, so two things changed. So, so one, the uh, uh, tape formulation got, got a little better since they heard it, but the most important thing was the addition of AC bias. So by uh, adding a high frequency to the recording head, it will uh, make the tape recording a lot more linear uh, with lower distortion and lower noise. So that was essentially, I, I think in all instances, it, it was discovered on accident, you know, from, from like a radio frequency on a bench. It, it got into electronics accidentally and all of a sudden like, wow, this, this sounds incredible, what happened, you know? And uh, so it was simultaneously discovered in Germany, in America, and it was applied to wire in America. Um, it, it was discovered also at Bell Labs and they were uh, developing a, um, a, not tape, but like a, like a steel band, a thin steel band recording. And so it was discovered there and then also in Japan. So, so kind of, you know, simultaneously everyone discovered it. But uh, the tape machine what, what was the most effective uh, device. Uh, and so uh, the addition to, to, to the, the addition of the bias to the tape really kind of pushed it forward as a great recording media.